What is the worst movie you've ever seen? No, I'm not talking about Transformers 2 or Grown Ups 2. I mean a movie so bad, so fundamentally broken, that it leaves a pit in your stomach or makes you feel frustrated and angry beyond any reasonable measure. This is a question I've been asking myself for a while, and I think it's about time to do something about it. So I've pulled up the list of the bottom 100 lowest rated movies on IMDb, and I'm going through them one by one to find the worst movie ever. Welcome to the search for the worst. The Room is the worst thing in the history of anything ever. I'm pretty sure my eight-year-old cousin could pull off a more nuanced and convincing story than whatever the hell this movie turned out to be. Much like Troll 2, The Room was made famous by being regarded as one of the best good-bad movies. And it's actually so fucking weird at times, so completely ludicrous, that I found myself laughing pretty often and regularly just because of how stupid every single thing in this movie is. So is it the quintessential so bad that it's good movie? Well, let's find out. Hi, babe. This? This is Johnny, played by the fabulous, the wonderful writer and director Tommy Wazoo. Wazow, I have no clue. Who can't get through any scene without either saying, Oh, hi. Oh, hi, Danny. Hi. Hi, doggy. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Danny. Mark. Oh, hi, Mike. What's new? Oh, oh, hi, Mark. Catch it. Oh, hi, Mark. Come in. Oh, hi, Danny. Oh, hi, Susan. <laughs> oh, hi, Claudette. Hi. Or without laughing for absolutely no reason at all. <laughs> 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 now let me explain. Nothing really happens in this movie. Well, actually, things do happen. It's still a full-length movie, an hour and 39 minutes even. So how does it fill that time? I guess what Tommy was going for was a dialogue and character-based tragedy, but he expresses the story through the same three or four scenes on repeat until the movie ends. Anyway, the movie starts with Johnny coming home from work and giving his fiance a new dress. Isn't it fabulous? I would do anything for my girl. It's painfully obvious that his dialogue is dubbed half the time, probably because he can barely speak. And from what I could find out about it, he was born in America, so he has no real excuse for this. He emphasizes the weirdest words when he speaks. His voice is like the physical embodiment of one of those messages made out of newspaper clippings that serial killers leave as clues. I fed up with his world. He does have the face of a serial killer, I'll give him that. Out of nowhere, this character called Denny appears, who casually asks if he can join in on their lovemaking session. I'm going to take a nap. Can I go upstairs too? <laughs> No one really reacts to him, they just sort of act like he didn't say anything. Then he goes as far as to sneak upstairs and join in on the couple. I just like to watch you guys. Who the fuck are you again? The next three minutes are one of the most uncomfortable and pointlessly elongated sex scenes ever presented to the silver screen. If you casually skip through this movie, there's an extremely high chance you're going to land on some kind of sex scene. And to tell you the truth, they're the only part of the movie that genuinely pissed me off. Apparently the woman in this scene was very uncomfortable when she had to film this bullshit, not surprisingly. But she was shocked when she saw the movie and found out these scenes weren't just a few seconds long. It just never stops. It feels like fucking eternity before it finally ends and oh come on, I didn't want to see that. We then move on to this stupid ass scene where this woman's mother comes over to have a chat. This is one of the many scenes I was on about earlier that repeat multiple times. They don't change, and they say the exact same thing every time, and ultimately have no reason to exist. Her mother comes in, they talk about how the wedding is going to be soon, she explains how she doesn't love Johnny anymore, to which the mother responds with some materialistic bullshit like, and he's getting a promotion very soon, or how she needs him for financial security. It's crystal clear that this dialogue is written by a man, a stupid, probably slightly retarded, dumbass man, who clearly has no idea what women talk to each other about, so he just assumes that all they chat about is men and how they're all pigs, but at the same time how important they are to be used for money. Just a load of horse shit, basically. Let me always end the scene with this woman saying something like, I don't want to talk about it. Or, listen, I've got to go, despite the fact she brought it up. This character, this human, is the most evil, the most despicable person I've ever seen depicted in a movie. She's manipulative, a pure bitch at times for no real reason, and is also a fucking idiot who has no motivation for any of the evil things that she does. You're living with one guy and you're sleeping with another guy? I'm doing what I want to do. Once her mum fucks off, she calls up Johnny's best friend, Mark. Here's a fun little bit of trivia about Mark. He's actually named after Matt Damon. Matt Damon, Tommy Wiseau's favourite actor, who misheard Matt as Mark. You can't. You just can't make this shit up. They agree to meet up, and she tries to seduce Mark. Johnny's my best friend. Really? I didn't know that. Johnny's my best friend. He's your best friend. Oh, come on, Johnny's my best friend. No, Mark's his best friend. 
I'm so happy I have you as my best friend, and I love Lisa so much. For some reason, there's something inherently funny about this wine pour scene. I don't know what it is, but I can't help but smile every time I see it. So even despite him saying no to her over and over, there's another excruciating sex scene that goes on for far too long. God, why did you do this to me? Now I know this character's the queen of all cunts, but you can't pin this entirely on her, you stupid asshole. You have self-control. You have a brain that can make decisions. Well, actually, clearly he doesn't. I can't hurt Johnny. You realize you're saying this right after doing possibly the worst thing a fiance and best friend could do, right? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. Everyone recognizes and thinks Johnny is some kind of an angel. He obviously wrote this entire movie based around this shameless self-insert who everyone likes. You're my favorite customer. It really is just hilariously stupid. Why does he remind me so much of Lenny from Of Mice and Men? Probably because he's a fucking idiot. Yeah, that'll be it. Then he shows up and asks, Can I kiss you? What. The. Fuck. Get this whack job away from you! Forget Johnny being a serial killer, this kid is clearly the psychopath in the making. Surprisingly enough, Johnny didn't get the promotion. Probably because he's a fucking moron. I still love you. You're the only one who does. She really is the queen of all cunts, isn't she? Wait, did he just say she's the only one who loves him? You're the only one who does. What about that weird creep, Denny? He said it earlier. I love you and Johnny. Everyone else seems to adore him and recognize him. Mm. Oh, fuck you. Another one? That's three in under 30 minutes. Another bit of trivia, this one is actually made up of unused shots from the first sex scene, because the lady was too uncomfortable to film another one, hence why it's pretty much identical in every single way. Oh, look, it's another one of these scenes. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. She's awful nonchalant about this whole situation, don't you think? You assume that this would somehow be important to the plot, but no one acknowledges it. It's never brought up again. And that's no reason to even be mentioned at all. Well, at least you have a good man. You're wrong. Mom, he's not what you think he is. He didn't get his promotion. And he got drunk last night. And he hit me. Why? Why did he write her as such a supreme twat? Out of nowhere, these two characters we've never seen before have a sex scene. <laughs> What are these characters doing here? What are these characters doing here? Whoa, that, that was weird. Denny appears and we finally find out his deal. He was adopted by Johnny, and Johnny not only pays for his tuition, but also pays for an apartment for him. I told you, Mom, Johnny is very caring about the people in his life. Mom, he's not what you think he is. He didn't get his promotion, and he got drunk last night. And he hit me. So which one is it? Make your fucking mind up. Out of nowhere, Denny's attacked by some thug who he owes money to. Then every single other character in the movie shows up and saves him. It's so fucking weird and contrived. <laughs> I don't have them anymore. What kind of drugs, Denny? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't have them anymore. What kind of drugs do you take? It's nothing like that. What the hell is wrong with you? Stop ganging up on me. Jesus Christ, this is the funniest shit. And we're your friends. We're going to help you. What's he doing with his face? I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. This took 32 takes for him to get right. And this was the best take. Can you even imagine what the previous 31 were like? Look, Mark starts picking his nose in this shot because he's so uninterested. They start chatting about women that cheat on their partners. And Mark tells a horrible story about how some girl he knew got the shit beaten out of her. I used to know a girl. She had a dozen guys. One of them found out about it, beat her up so bad she ended up in a hospital on Guerrero Street. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Why did you laugh at that? Th that's not funny. I think he's actually so brain dead that he can't actually figure out what people are saying. So he just laughs and moves on. Do you have some secrets? Forget it. Why don't you Why? tell me? Forget it, dude. Is it some secret? No, tell forget me. it. On. I'll talk to you later. Well, whatever. How do they stay straight faced for this? Like, really? Johnny then gives a profound speech to Denny about life. If a lot of people love each other, the world would be a better place to live. Meanwhile, Queen Cunt is being a cunt and telling other people that Johnny hit her. And he hit me. He hit you? 
When Johnny gets home, they have an argument about the lies that he hits her. So instead, he pushes her over. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! We cut to this pointless scene where every other male character appears and starts throwing a football around. Because movie. Johnny overhears Lisa saying something about cheating on him. I had sex with someone else. You can't be serious. How can they say this about me? I don't believe it. I show them. I record everything. So he pulls a tape recorder out of his ass and they show him gradually preparing the machine for recording. You couldn't add a cut or two in here just to speed this shit up a bit, could you? Johnny then happens to be visited by his psychiatrist friend. Yeah, he, he has a fucking psychiatrist friend. And they have a little chat about the whole Lisa situation. You know what they say, love is blind. I can't believe how fucking amateur this 50-year-old man is. He's so unbelievably clueless. He really has a friend who happens to be a psychiatrist. He really just put that in the movie. Peter, you always play psychologist with us. What? You just asked him for advice. But you are a psychologist. Do you have some advice? <laughs> chicken, Peter, you just a little chicken. Cheep, 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 cheep. Who are you calling a chicken? What in God's name was that? Because that was pretty much everything except a chicken. So then they throw the football around in their suits. We then move on to the single greatest moment in cinematic history. How was work today? Oh, pretty good. We got a new client and the bank will make a lot of money. What client? I cannot tell you, it's confidential. Oh, come on, why not? No, I can't. Anyway, how is your sex life? Mark and Lisa have another sex scene, then they throw a football around again. Then Mark and Lisa almost have another sex scene, but thankfully get caught by that lady from earlier. You guys are too much. Why does Johnny not do anything at this point? He flat out overheard her admitting it earlier, but instead he decided to record all his phone calls instead of confronting her. You know, at this point, this is the last thing I should be worrying about. I just want this film to end already. If we skip past another queen cunt and mother scene, we finally get to the surprise party for Johnny. Look at this asshole. He just doesn't give a fuck, does he? He knows how stupid this all is. What's going on here? Why are you doing this? Who are you? I've never seen you before. You have got to be honest with Johnny. I agree with that. No, really, who the fuck are you? It turns out this guy was originally supposed to be the psychiatrist character from earlier, but the psychiatrist guy had other acting arrangements, so he couldn't make it. So they just gave the psychiatrist lunch to this guy, and it makes no sense. Thank you, honey. This is a beautiful party. You invited all my friends. Good thinking. What the fuck else are you gonna do for a surprise party, you fucking spastic? And if Lisa couldn't get any worse, she lies to everyone that she's pregnant for no reason. For no reason at all. It leads nowhere and has no relevance to anything. So don't even worry about it. Mark and Johnny have a little fight but instantly forgive each other. Johnny then makes some chicken noises. Chip, 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 chip. And then he proclaims how he's fed up of this world. I fed up with this world. He's such a goddamn child. I, I really can't get over this. Lisa says how she's gonna leave Johnny, so then he starts playing the phone recordings. This is the payoff from that whole setup. He already knew all of this. What, why is he even fucking bothering? What's the fucking point? And then to top it all off, Johnny has a little strop and breaks all his stuff, then shoots himself in the head. I guess it's supposed to be a tragedy, but you're just kind of thankful. It's like if Lenny killed himself instead of being shot by George. It's actually pretty relieving. Somehow everyone immediately finds his body, then Mark kisses his dead, shot through head, and then Denny comes in and cries and the movie ends. The room is a menagerie of conveniences, contrivances, and cliches, with ridiculous characters whose motivations change every few minutes, sets that look like they belong in a 60s episode of Doctor Who, and writing and dialogue so bad that it makes crap like Transformers seems like Pulp Fiction in comparison. And you know what? It's fucking glorious. As far as the search for the worst goes, this is definitely the movie I've laughed the most at. But there are just a couple of things that hold it back from being that perfect bad movie. For one, it's far too long. You could easily cut out 40 minutes of this film and it would be no different. Fuck it, you could probably cut this down to 30 seconds and it would still have the same impact. I would do anything for my girl. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! <laughs> The four or five cringeworthy sex scenes make me never want to watch it again. But then I think back to Wazoo's bizarre voice, and I can't help but go back to some of the classic scenes just to see how insane his performance is. The Room is a classic. It's much more entertaining than bollocks like Troll 2. But at the same time, it just doesn't quite have that charm that something like Zat or Druids has in comparison. It is much better than Birdemic, though. Can't believe I just said all those words. What the fuck's a Zat? And up next in the search for the worst is... Prince of Space. I, I have no clue what that is. No clue.
So there it is, The Room. How does the name have anything to do with the movie? I've got no idea. Don't really give a fuck either. Have you seen Have you seen the poster for this movie? Just go have a look and go look at um, Tommy Wiseau's lazy eye. It's, it's just the worst poster ever. Even worse than Troll 2's. Anyway, so how does that movie look to you? Good, bad, bad, bad? Was the video good, bad, or good, good, or bad, bad? What? Anyway, whatever it is, feel free to tell me in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are appreciated. I'll see you next time. Bye! Lisa loves you too, as a person, as a human being.